Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Satoshi Club. I'm your crypto sensei for the day. And today we're doing a proof of work versus proof of stake versus proof of humanity. Now, have you ever heard of this term? Probably not. There's two projects out there that I've seen so far that try to utilize this proof of humanity concept, make it built for the future and, you know, to do greater things than proof of work and proof of stake. So let's get into a few definitions of uh, the first two which are proof of work then proof of stake and then i'm going to cover these two pretty cool projects that i found that uh you know try to do this themselves so proof of humanity if you haven't googled it already maybe pause the video do a quick google search try to learn what it is but if you're too lazy then just keep on watching now if you enjoy it make sure to smash the like button obviously subscribe to the channel and check out the links down in the description below if you want to learn more about these projects that i'm going to talk about now some of the key takeaways of proof of work it's a decentralized consensus mechanism and it is basically the combined uh, putting in of effort to solve these mathematical puzzles to prevent anybody from gaming a blockchain system and also to validify transactions, right? So it's used in cryptocurrency mining, it's used for validating transactions, and it's used for minting new tokens. Now also, due to proof of work, Bitcoin and other crypto transactions can be processed in a peer-to-peer -peer way in a secure manner without the need for a trusted third party, which is also a pretty cool thing. However, it does use a huge amount of energy, which is why modern systems and more and more cryptocurrencies out there are trying to move from the proof of work to the proof of stake system, right? P POS or proof of stake is an alternative to proof of work. And for example, Ethereum is trying to do it right now with their recent merge. Now, if you want to see a video about the merge, make sure to comment down below and I might do it just, uh, you know, tomorrow or something. But proof of stake is a system where cryptocurrency owners can validate block transactions based on the number of coins of validator stakes. So proof of stake was created as an alternative to proof of work. It is less energy consuming and it simply requires validators to hold and stake tokens to be able to, you know, validate transactions. It is less risky in terms of the potential for an attack on the network as it structures this compensation in a way that makes an attack less advantageous, which means you're basically going to be more uh, better off joining the network and becoming a validator rather than uh, you know trying to hack the system that's the system of compensation that we're talking about right here and lastly the next block writer on the blockchain is always selected at random with higher odds being assigned to nodes with larger stake positions so the more you're staking the more likely you are to be a validator and to earn some uh, rewards i guess in the proof of stake system now proof of stake reduces the amount of computational work hence reduces the amount of energy hence a lot of blockchains are migrating to it for example ethereum itself will require 32 ethereum to be staked before a user can become a validator pretty cool right and when a specific number of these validators verify that the block is accurate it is finalized and it is closed so that's proof of work that's proof of stake now let's move into proof of humanity so this is Claros right here they have a protocol called proof of humanity that's there to try and solve disputes on the web now this is the first one that i found out about and it's pretty cool there is a quite detailed explanation of how it actually works and basically it's a social identity verification system for humans on the ethereum blockchain it combines webs of trust reverse turing tests if you haven't heard of those make sure to google them and dispute resolution to create a sybil proof list of humans so basically you register you get verified you become one of these jurors or whatever and you're able to solve disputes online simply using your proof of you being a upstanding citizen to be able to get a sort of credibility on the blockchain to be able to basically become a validator based on your own person right now you may think okay this system can be gamed a lot of uh, different stuff can be done you know you can post a different photo and stuff you can uh, you know post your uh, friends photo you can try to use AI or one of those uh, you know you know those videos that actually look real but are not actually real like deep fakes and stuff but uh, you know surprisingly this explainer is a pretty good read um, I do recommend you check it out down in the description below because there is uh, a lot of different stuff that these guys are trying to do and obviously promote a lot of different use cases in the future next to this uh, being a judge or juror thing that Claros has going on. So this is how it looks and basically you are able to try it yourself if you want to. But I found a pretty cool project as well that is, uh, you know, probably even better than this proof of humanity concept from Claros because Claros is a 
uh, you know, juror system. So it's only there for solving disputes on the internet, right? They haven't really thought too much outside of the box with the whole idea, but here comes in humanoid itself, right? So where one human equals one node equals one vote. And basically what these guys are trying to do next to all their whitelists and all of these events going on, they're trying to uh, make an ecosystem that allows for real use cases based on this proof of hum humanity system, right? So I'm going to go through the white paper in a second or two, but a few things that you have to know is that these guys have a test net running since October 2021, the main net running since uh, literally right now. So it's going to come out very soon, September 2022, and full decentralization of this proof of humanity protocol is happening in June of 2026. So you can see that they're serious because they are now, you know, pretty honest about being released in 2026, but uh, it doesn't matter because they do provide some pretty cool use cases. So if you check out their blog, which I'm going to link down in the description below, um, they're trying to make, for example, just one of the things is biometrically secured storage networks. So imagine you're trying to build a decentralized storage network like IPFS or BitTorrent, for example, which is also peer to peer protocol, but where the storage nodes are bio authorized by real unique human beings. So you're imagining, you know, you get a retina scan, you get a fingerprint or something. And only in that case, you're able to access this decentralized data. So this is the future, right? Imagine you're trying to share something with only a few people in the entire world. You're not using Dropbox. You're not using Google Drive because it is centralized and somebody can monitor your data, but in this decentralized way. And by the way, this doesn't mean that you have to be hiding something. You don't have to be hiding something. You can simply prefer your data not to be out there in the centralized world, which is completely normal. And it's like, uh, you know, keeping a secret in real life. Why does somebody have to listen to it, right? So that's the whole point. And, you know, this uh, retina scanning, body part scanning, all of this stuff is able to make it happen with proof of humanity. So I'm going to leave this block down uh, down in the description below. Also, if you want to find out more about what Humanoid is going to be doing in the future, make sure to give them a follow on their Twitter. Everything will be linked down below. But what I wanted to do right now is read a little bit about the actual pitch book or white paper just to explain to you the key concept of what these guys are doing because I found it really cool. And as I said, two projects out there that I've found uh, when it comes to proof of humanity that have sparked my interest. It was the Claros one and this one right here when it comes to Humanode. So this civil resistance in modern proof of work and proof of stake is capital based, making these plutocracies at the very core. Plutocracies inevitably lead to decentralization and mining cartels, mo monopolies, oligopolies can dominate the markets in the future, which is a big problem because everything is moving towards money, right? Mining, it mines money, right? Staking, it requires money. But nodes in the humanoid network are created, humanoid, uh, through biometric verification of uniqueness. So they're taking a step further than the Claros uh, identity check because these guys are not doing biometric checks themselves. Humanode is actually trying to uh, make these nodes equal in terms of validation and voting power, bringing true equality between peers in a decentralized network. In case of malicious activity, the biometrics of a potential perpetrator are blacklisted and that's it, they're done. And instead of proof of work and proof of stake, Humanode utilizes the combination of proof of uniqueness and proof of existence combined with the blockchain creates a first ever human based verification layer. Pretty cool stuff, right? You have the consensus agnostic protocol, substrate framework. These are just part of the tech, private biometric search and matching, fat monetary algorithm and rebalancing system, which I have no idea what it is, but I do recommend you Google it. And I probably will after filming this video. Vortex DAO, decentralized auditable liveness detection and EVM compatible uh, smart contract layer as well. Now the unique te uh, the uniqueness test this is pretty cool. The possibility of a match between two different people is one out of 125 million, right? So that's pretty unique. And the liveness check, the possibility of spoofing an identity without a real human in front of the camera is one out of $80,000. So what does this mean? Well, we can see some graphs here talking about the accuracy growth of algorithms over the years. And as you can see, they're getting more and more accurate right now in 2022. And it is exponential growth. So over time, it's going to be probably even better. And obviously, when it comes to liveless detection accuracy, um, you can see the same, right? So let's say 2015, 16, it's one out of 30. Um, 2013, there was some uh, 
protocol that managed one out of 847 and now it's one out of 80,000. So this basically means that there is no spoofing other humans. There's no spoofing data and proof of humanity is on its way to become one of the largest systems in the cryptocurrency world. Now, these are some of the partners and friends of the project. You can read a little bit more about all of the use cases, all of these other partners out there. And basically, um, check out the roadmap right here and all of this stuff that they're going to do. For example, a one click humanoid app where you're able to verify yourself and use your own humanity as a proof and a validator in a system to be able to earn some rewards and be a valued member of that system on the blockchain. This is something that has the potential to become huge beat any dao in the world because it is a different type of uh, governance when everybody can have their own vote and credibility based on the blockchain and never forgotten and basically a lot more stuff will probably come out in the future when it comes to the use cases and a lot more so that was humanoid that was proof of work that was proof of stake and that was proof of humanity guys i hope you enjoyed the whole video make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel drop a comment down below if you did if you did Check out Humanote in the description. Check out Claros in the description. I'm going to leave you all the links down there so you can learn on your own why Proof of Humanity may be one of the coolest things to happen to the blockchain world in this century. So thanks for watching. And lastly, I'm not a financial advisor and you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the crypto world. And with that being said, I will see you all in the next video.